It's been like two weeks since we had a crossover review, but fear not, another one is coming up right now. This is the new BMW X1, and despite this rather gloomy paint job, there is an advantage which you can spot from a mile away instantly. This car doesn't look like the old X1. BMW X1 E84 had one problem. It looked more like the 1 Series than other X models. The 1 Series itself had uh, very particular proportions, so blowing it up to make a crossover out of it was a brave step and... Oh, come on, who am I kidding? I hated the first generation X1 because it looked like an old shoe. The X1 is a much more interesting proposition. The other day my neighbor asked me whether it was an X3 or an X5 parked in my driveway. So the image test passed with flying colors. The new X1 is 444 centimeters long, 182 centimeters wide and 160 centimeters high. The 25i variant weighs 1540 kilograms. It is about 10 centimeters longer than the 2 Series Active Tourer with which it shares the platform. The X1 and 2 Series Active Tourer have the same wheelbase length of 267 centimeters. The X1 is bigger than Audi Q3, but similar in size to Mercedes Benz GLA. By the way, the GLA does not look as big, it actually feels cramped. Outside of the premium segment, X1 is somewhere between Ford Kuga and Nissan Qashqai. Before you ask, it is considerably smaller than the X3. Keyless access and power tailgate are part of a 700 euro convenience package. The boot has 505 liters capacity, which is 85 liters more than in the previous generation. I sometimes complain about car boots because there is no way to secure things like a shopping bag. I do some small shopping at least 2-3 times a week and I don't want my groceries to be thrown around the boot. And what if I also buy a bottle of some beverage to go along? Here I have everything I need. In this example we also get electrically released back seat rests. Thanks to double boot floor we get flat loading space. The back seats have a 40-20-40 split, like so. And you can also adjust how the back seats are reclined. Obviously you're not going to travel like that, but you could travel like this or like that. You can also slide the back seats forward like so. I'm 175 centimeters. This driver's seat is set for my driving position and I can still barely fit, but I can fit. And uh, if you're a child, you shouldn't have a problem. What else? Uh, we have a picnic table here, something, uh, something that was missing from the BMW 2 Series Active Tour. I can unfold it like so, and I can also adjust its height. I can also remove it completely if I don't want to use it, if I don't want it to take up space. Now, back you go, in you go, there we go. Ta-da! And look at the headroom. The reason why Mercedes-Benz GLA feels so cramped is because there is much less headroom. In the X1 I can even sit in the middle, although then my knees are touching these sticking out elements of the seats. And why do we get double USB ports on an Opel Astra, but in a Beamer twice its price there is only a single 12 volt socket? Uh, in the front, a bit of a surprise because there is not enough space between the seat and the bottom of the steering wheel. Of course, I could move the steering wheel up like that, but then I can't see what's happening here at the bottom of the dials. At the moment, the seat is in the bottom position. You can't lower it anymore. The only thing I could do is lower the thigh support, but then I would be uncomfortable. Although many elements in the X1 are the same as in the 2 Series Active Tourer, like the seats or the armrest, the center console looks more like in the X3. The driving mode button is back next to the iDrive controller, which by the way is too low to scribble comfortably on the touchpad. The AC panel is back up under the radio and there is some storage and cup holders at the bottom of the console. The USB port and a 3.5mm jack socket are in a cubby under the armrest. And the head-up display is back up on the windscreen instead of the plastic panel sticking out above the dials. Possibly BMW customers didn't like the cheap solution.
First generation X1 was also the first BMW crossover to feature a rear-wheel drive option. The new X1 is based on the UK L platform, which offers a front-wheel drive option on the less powerful variants. But this is an X-Drive model with torque sent to the back wheels if the front wheels start to slip. Like in the 2 Series, also here I can't really feel any difference while driving. The X1 is great around the corners, although high center of gravity means there is some body roll. I suggest you skip any sporty options, the suspension is stiff enough, although it's not as harsh as in the first generation X1. The 2 liter 231 horsepower petrol engine propels the X1 from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.5 seconds. This is exactly the same as a comparable Audi Q3 Mercedes Benz GLA is over a half a second slower. But forget about the 6.4 liters per 100 km in the combined cycle. The other day I did a leisurely trip about 100 km uh, along roads like that, so no high speed, nothing like that. and. It didn't look like I'm gonna get much less than eight and a half liters per 100 kilometers and a couple of kilometers around the city and uh, the fuel consumption meter showed a nine. Now BMW claims that the X1 will do less than eight liters per 100 kilometers in the urban cycle. Yeah, right. Of course, I tend to be in Eco Pro mode most of the time, and again, I implore BMW to let me choose the mode and leave it like that. Don't make me switch from normal to Eco every time I turn the car on. I mean, Audi doesn't have a problem with that. If I switch into efficiency mode or into dynamic mode, it stays there until I decide to change it. The noise. On the one hand, every now and then I hear a pleasant rumble from the exhaust. And that's fine. It's nothing vulgar like in the Mini Cooper S. It's like someone discreetly clearing one's throat. <coughs> that kind of thing. But at motorway speeds, there is a bit too much wind noise for a 50 grand plus car. Yes, the X1 may have better interior quality than the first generation X3, but the Koreans are breathing down the Germans' backs. For now, the Germans are winning. Thanks to driving aids, the X1 has semi-autonomous functions, albeit you have to meet certain criteria to use them. So, you cannot drive faster than 60 km per hour, you have to be on a motorway or a similar type of road, the lanes in front of you have to be visible, there has to be a car in front of you and both hands have to be on the wheel. I suspect you get this type of uh, moderately moving traffic on German motorways, but in Poland it's either standstill or full ahead. In the Q7 you can use a similar type of traffic assistant even in the city. Back to the X-Drive for a minute. In theory, every manufacturer claims that their system is the best because it can beat the competition on a specially prepared off-road course. Yes, there are some spectacular obstacles and it looks great on film. But in real life, a four-wheel drive or all-wheel drive system, whatever you like to call it, uh, well, it's as good as the traction. I can't really tell the difference between this variation of X-Drive and whatever type of Quattro you get in the Q3. However, the other day I did drive through some muddy trails and I didn't get stuck, which I think is a success. The X1 was driving from left to right, but I had enough traction with these tires and the 18 cm ground clearance was just enough. Now I'm not going to try it again, because I'll definitely get stuck with the cameras rolling. Today the car is clean, but is it really that much of a problem to make longer doors that cover the sills? The new BMW X1 is a step in the right direction. It's practical, it's good to drive, it looks good, 
but if you don't mind owning a car with a less posh badge, then there is a lot to choose from in the mass segment for just half the price. And do you think small premium crossovers are worth their price tag? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe, share and rate my videos. New episodes every Friday. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.